Force IMF is a group of operatives that can do all of the non-attributable things that CIA couldn't do. If the question could be posed, would an organization like that exist? The answer, logically, might well be, well, yeah. Young, literally, uh, sat every Friday night and watched uh, Mission Impossible. And the match lit the fuse, and the theme music kicked in, and you were in for an hour of great excitement. And it actually had a bearing on my interest in joining the CIA. I always liked the fact that they went through the list of photographs and picked out who was going to be the special IMF team of the week. And that team always worked together. When operations officers like myself were in the field, it is not unusual for us to function alone. It is also not unusual for us to function in a team. And sometimes that team is made up of people who are brought together just for that mission. The skills that make a good intelligence agent include the obvious in terms of language and geographic specialization. Probably the characteristic that makes an outstanding intelligence agent is their dedication and their heart. Intelligence personnel and special intelligence operations go through amazing hardships, the demands that are placed on them personally, emotionally, physically. One thousand, two thousand, You need the best of the best. We want to think of covert operations in two broad categories. One is a set of operations designed to gather information. The other set then is covert action or efforts to influence the politics or behavior of a foreign country. Maybe you have dictatorship. We might be the ones to actually go help train and support an insurgency to overthrow some type of uh, system that we didn't want to see in place. The most successful big operation was getting the Soviet Union out of Afghanistan. Big operation, probably a billion dollars over 10 years. Then we called them freedom fighters. Later, much of it turned out to be the Taliban. So uh, every success has its price. We did have a series of efforts into the 1960s to try and assassinate Fidel Castro. Those involved a variety of gadgets. At one point, they tried to put a toxin in his scuba diving suit. In another case, they used some substance that they thought might make his beard fall out, thinking that his beard was the key to his uh, popularity, part of his machismo. Is art imitating life or life imitating art? The ability to do a quick mix on a high explosives and put it to use is remarkably real. Stick a gum, right? No. No. Red light, green light. You come up against a lock you can't pick, you mash them together. <laughs> Hasta lasagna, don't get any on you. If you truly are engaged in, in espionage, then you are not seeking a high profile. And that's why the phrase, a little gray man, has been employed through the years. In many cases, you want to blend in with wherever you are. It's chameleon-like. You are not to be trained. As far as the technology that goes into the art of disguise and deception, it has been, I think, no holds barred, both in the government community, what the technologists and specialists are doing in disguise and deception, and what's going on in Hollywood today is dramatic, so I think they learn from each other. My forte is realism, to pass the closest of scrutiny, where I could walk up to you six inches and talk to you, and you wouldn't know I had a silicone mask on. You are constantly playing a role. You are living in alias. You are projecting a persona, speaking languages, uh, exhibiting cultural traits that are totally alien to your own U.S. indigenous upbringing. And you have to be absolutely able to get in and rub shoulders with terrorists, drug traffickers, and all sorts of other criminal people. Unlike an actor who flubs up on a script and the director says, cut, and they reload the camera, and you look at the script, and you try it again. If we mess up our lines, and somebody says, cut, 
They're talking about your carotid artery. My team is dead! Jesus. The listen's gone. They knew we were coming, man. They knew we were coming and the disc is gone. Are you intact? The disc is gone. Did you, do you read me? The list is in the open! Companies, most of them created companies, are increasingly used by agents. By that is, by CIA agents who are out trying to gather information or recruit spies. But rather than have the typical official cover posing as a diplomat, they now use what's called non-official cover. They're what's called NOX and will operate as a business person doing business in a particular part of the world. The man you're looking at is Alexander Galitzin, an attaché at our embassy in Prague. He is also a traitor. He has stolen one half of a CIA knock list, a record of all our deep cover agents working in Eastern Europe. There have been past circumstances where there have been compromises. The identity has become known, networks have been rolled up, and those assets, almost without exception, have paid an ultimate price with their lives. It's among the most closely held information. We've been debating the Valerie Plame case in the United States. It does mean that people's lives can be at stake, potentially. You're not just talking about one person, but you're talking about hundreds of people. Anybody that person's ever done business with, to include cover companies and those type of things, that could become a real problem and a threat to national security. Protecting special intelligence assets is a significant issue because, number one, if you fail and it becomes known, then you're going to find it very difficult to recruit assets in the future and to collaborate with other partners in the intelligence business. Simple game. Four players. Exfil opens the pocket. Cyber Ops lifts the wall. Bank. IMF mainframe. Or exactly it. In Langley. In Mission Impossible 1, the knock list was consolidated in a super, super secret, super, super protected vault in the heart of the intelligence community, which is, which is a nice representation, because if you're going to compile all of that monolithic global data into a single point, you would certainly need that kind of that kind of structure and apparatus to protect it. Inside CIA headquarters at Langley. Is he serious? Always. Often the term bigot list is used to refer to information which only certain people can see. And so it is it is typical in intelligence agencies to have information that is that only a few people are privy to. People always want to ask, what's it like? Did you have to race through town, leaving explosions in the rearview mirror of your Aston Martin? But what's at the core of the real work of a CIA officer is serving uh, as part of this country's first line of defense. That very high motivation uh, leads them to take risks and to undertake extraordinary actions for which they may get no public recognition. You have to drive within yourself a good deal of satisfaction and not expect it from others around you because the fact of the matter is a lot of what you do probably isn't going to be known to the outside world.